my YouTube channel is your girl Lily Munyash. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to where we live, where we laugh, where we love. <laughs> you know, where we are just bubbly, a place where we have a conversation about so many different things about life, about weight. I'm too much into talking about weight because I'm obese. I'm, a, I'm already obese and I really struggle with my weight and I have seen so many people in my community we are struggling with the weight as well and that's why I talk about it you have to you can if, even if you plus size you don't have uh, you don't have to be plus size and boring you can dress good you can smell good you can look nice you can clear all the perspective people have about base people you know just being us good mom posh mom you know <laughs> sexy mommies <laughs> So if you're new here, welcome, do comment, subscribe, don't leave the channel before subscribing and if the content is good and you know you can share it with someone else, maybe your sister, your loved one, your family, whoever, you can just share, right? And we are, will appreciate, especially me as the content creator, yeah? I'll feel good. So uh, initially we were talking about uh, parenting, we had a lot of tips a lot of uh, topics surrounding parenting as parents where we go wrong where we are what we're supposed to do how we're supposed to handle our children how we're supposed to bring them up things like that and tips that i shared as a mother and uh, we never completed all the topics and we kind of jumped through few of them and today i want to talk about three of them that I left out from the previous video. If you have not watched the previous video, kindly do go check on my videos that I've recently uploaded. They are still on my YouTube. You can check them, then you can follow up from there. And yeah, so in parenting, we touched so many things about uh, upbringing, about discipline, about uh, communicating to your child and that. And so today I have three topics that I want us to talk about. One is sex education, what you talk about to your child. When is the time that is appropriate for you to like approach the whole topic about sex with your child because it's very important. Number two, we'll talk about hygiene, cleanliness, how to be independent, how to clean up after themselves and, and so forth. And then, um, the third one is relationship how they relate with other siblings how they relate with the other uh, relatives cousins nieces aunties and aunt, uncles neighbors name them and that's the, that's when the relationship comes in and the community is also involved and so on right so let's start you're liking my hair i'm loving it i'm telling you i did my braids yesterday <laughs> for those who viewed my youtube the other channel the other video that i uploaded yesterday i was with wig i was having my wig on and i kind of got tired with my let me just boast like i'm liking it yeah <laughs> if you like my braids kindly comment below let me know so um yeah that was a by the way so let's start with cleanliness you know, when you have children in the house and you have a nanny, let's start from there, when you have a nanny in the house and they tend to think that they, they, they are not entitled to do the cleaning, it's not their job, it's not what they're supposed to be doing, you know, and they think that the nanny is there to clean up after themselves, you know, the, after, after them, I mean. Uh, it's good. Sometimes it's hard depending on your child it, because a child, children do grow differently. There are those kids who are very sharp. There are those kids who are always involved even when you're in the kitchen. They will tell you, Mommy, can I do this? Mommy, can I cut this? Can I help you prepare this? Mommy, can I put these utensils to the drawer, to the cupboard or whatever? There are those kids who will just automatically pick up. And there are other kids that they are just slow or lazy. You know, they just play lazy. Whenever they just have a cup of water or whatever they were just uh, taking, let's for instance, it's dinner time and they are not even clearing the dining table, the spoons are everywhere. It's like, it's mandatory. It's like, it's your part to tell them like, pick up the plates, you know, clean up the table, arrange the chairs, you know, it, they are those kids you have to keep on telling them. For me, I feel it's okay to tell, to let them know, regardless of their age, you know, because at the end of the day, they will grow with it. I, the recent video I said, you train a child when the child is small, 
they, when they are little they really pick up really well and it's good uh, like it, they, they will get used to it easily than when you start instilling those kind of cleanup behaviors when they are older because they will try to rebel and feel like uh, why everything is changing all of a sudden it wasn't like that auntie or nanny used to do everything in the house so am i being told to do the utensils or am i told to be folding my clothes you know those kind of things brushing my shoes and all those kind of things so i i learned it from my mom few things you pick up when you're growing up for me i, I picked up uh one of so many things and this is one of them cleaning up after myself uh my mom was very strict she was a very strict and very clean woman you see those clean women that you even feel uncomfortable because of too much cleanliness that that was my mom so uh, about cleaning up I, I it grew with me i knew when i wake up in the morning i was the lazy one actually i was the laziest one i'm the third born in my family and uh everything for me was being pushy uh, even even if it's cleaning about uh, anything that is mine i was being pushed every time and it got to a point that I'm, I'm getting used to it i'm cleaning even before i'm told by my sister to clean up i'm washing utensils before you know but be before then it was it was too much headache it was it, it was being pushy all the time so when i started having my own children and my own home and i started now instilling it when they are small kids we would wake up in the morning uh, if I'm the one in the house that is waking them in the morning when they are just small kids like one year or two years Yeah, we would just like uh, Make the bed together. We'll tell them like pull this sheet bed sheets from this side uh, Let's fold the duvet and it became a habit to a point that when they are grown now now because they are grown two of them are grown but the small one is still still very small but even if the small one if even the small one once we are doing like we're having uh, something that I have fed her fed him he, I would tell him take this one to the kitchen he will take to the sink or even before telling him he will tell me mom I've finished can I take it to the sink so it's a little by little when we go out and come back it, he won't get inside the house with the dirty shoes he will remove them you know those kind of small things that you see kids doing then again kids will do exactly what you do kids will imitate you to the dot <laughs> if you come inside if you come from outside with your dirty shoes and you come with them through this you don't remove them they will still do that if you you don't wash your hands before you eat they will still do that if you you you're just dirty they will become dirty regardless they will be throwing things around anyhow they, without without a care so they will imitate you so <laughs> keep watch and they start imitating as 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 early as they know you're the mother as long as they call you mom that's it they will start imitating everything so let's be careful so um for the next topic relationship let's talk about relationship and this goes a very long way because you know it, your kids will not only relate with you the mother or the father or the sister or the uncle they will relate with everybody they will go to school they'll start relationships they will have friends they will go to you know kids grow differently i keep repeating this one because every topic that uh, that you engage or anything that you want to instill your child you need to know your child how fast is this child is is, is my fast as fast is my child a fast learner is my child a slow learner is my child friendly is my child talkative everything that you want to instill with this child will be totally different from the first born to the second born to the third born so it's you as a parent to know what kind of this child is you know that does my child bottle so many things inside that my child is my child outspoken is my child uh, pinpoint and say this is what i want this is not what i want every kids are different and i keep giving examples of my children my firstborn is very quiet very composed my child is so quiet to a point that if you if you want to have a conversation with him you're the one to start the whole conversation the whole story then he will come in he will, when you start the conversation he's so in into it he will just contribute he will he will you know he will just give all the stories and all that and but if you wait for him to approach you or tell you like uh, something is bothering not unless something is really too much into his core, like he cannot take it, that's when he will talk about it. But he's very quiet. My second born is wild. My second born will tell you anything, anytime, anyhow, you know, the way he wants it to be like. That's that's what I say, like you need to know what kind of your child is. Outspoken. My third born is really outspoken. 
he talks a lot he says he greets everyone even when you're going to the glossary and you don't know the people on the road he'll be like hi my name is javix um you know he would try and engage try and engage everyone and say hi to everyone in in relationship matter or how they relate with other people it just comes automatically depending with the other person and then if they are too trusting it's up to you as a parent to know your child is too trusting you can have a conversation about trusting people too much giving people way too much you know uh, sharing too much information it's up for you to now tame and know what kind of relationship you want your child to have with other people because of of course the way they relate with their the, the siblings maybe your your the, the nieces the uncles the cousins it will be it should be totally different how they relate with strangers out there you know because you cannot assume that your child is so friendly and you know there are other predators out here there are people who kidnap children kidnappers they you know you can never you can never be too sure with strangers or people out there trust issues should be limited for other people because we also want them to be cautious we want them to be careful we want them to know the world outside is bigger than what is it, what it seems like we want to know the world we want them to know that it goes beyond beyond mom beyond dad beyond sister beyond brother it goes beyond that and that's why we have to be careful as well we have to communicate as well and let them know trusting too much you know uh, telling too much sometimes you know those kind of behaviors by with time because you know they are growing every single day and kids are changing if they were talkative maybe they won't be if they are sharing too much they will not they will stop but it's for you as a parent to just get your child and know where to tame when to tame and how to tame it so yeah um i hope i'm making sense right <laughs> let's go to the third and the final so our third yeah <laughs> i'm a note person i write notes <laughs> So our third topic, our third topic that we will talk about is uh, sex, sex education. When is the right time for you to just sit down as a parent, regardless whether you're the father, whether you're the mother, whether you're the guardian, whether you're the grandma, if you're taking care of a child, okay, who is underage, what time is best for you to have a sex talk? When is the right time to have that educational talk? For me. Uh, my kids are not that grown, but it's something that I always have in mind and it's something that I have talked about, uh, especially with my, my teen. I started talking to my teen when he was in class 6, class 5. Class 5, I guess it's grade 5. I don't know how you call it where you are. Here in Kenya, we call it grade 5. I started this conversation because I felt I was ready. I felt that my child was ready to have that, that conversation because uh, sex education is also taught in school and uh, once they get I think in grade 5 where they, they are taught in biology about productive reproductive system, about uh, male reproductive system, female reproductive system and so that's where I came in. Okay. Uh, I think I came in uh, a term, one term before they got introduced to it because after I got the conversation with him, he after one term he came and told me they are talking about male reproductive system, they are drawing it, they are naming it, they are labeling it and all those kind of things and I was like wow, so I was ahead. So it's good, sometimes it gets scary, I know it gets scary because you don't want to get into details. But you can be as shallow as 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 time goes, you know, because at 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 that age, I think it's eight of eight, uh, eight of ten, eight nine. You don't want to go into detail about sexual activities, sexual uh, things. But you can be as shallow as you can. If uh, that's a male, you can be like you're a male, and you know why you're a male. You know, you will make them be aware. You know what a male is supposed to do. Do you know what sex is? Do you know when you engage a sex with a female? What happens? You know, you can be as shallow as you can. And then a time goes by every year, maybe after after when when they graduate from grade five, going to grade six, you can now change the topic and talk about pregnancy. You know how pregnancy is, is formed. Do you know how it, people get pregnant? Do you know what are sexual transmitted diseases? Do you know when, you know, 
And then if it's a female, you have to introduce cleanliness, how to clean yourself, you know, talk about private parts, talk about growing up, growing, growing your boobies, you know, what, what, you sh what you should not show too much, how to cover up, you know, you're a female, this is, you're a girl, you're a little girl, this is how you're supposed to sit down in front of people, this is how you're supposed to address yourself, this is how you're supposed to dress, you have the, the you have a lot of education that you need to teach a child regardless whether they are a boy child or a girl child a child is a child and they have a right to get that education from you as a parent because most of us parents we just sit down and be like they're in school they have a teacher who will teach them about that their school teaches um self-care and uh, what do you call home science they will be taught about that cleanliness health and hygiene no yes they will be taught but that will that will be shallow it will be taught on blackboard, it will be explained there, and it will be left there. It's for you to instill, to show by example. If it's your girl, you just take an andy and, and, and pads and teach that child. This is how you put on the pads, this is how you clean up, this is when your monthly period starts, this is how you change, this is how you clean up, this is how you hide your stuff, this is how you dispose. You know those kind of intimate uh, conversations that a child should have with a parent? Those kind of conversations. I saw someone say that a, a dad is not supposed to teach their girl those kind of educations about uh, cleanliness and um, maybe changing of their pads when they are having their period on or the menstrual, I don't know how you call it. Here we used to call it monthly period. <laughs> yeah, the, the menstrual, you know, it's it's up to the... the okay, I also agree. It, it, it might sound weird, look weird anyway, but uh, I'm sure the dad is also surrounded by female. If the dad is not married, maybe he's a single dad. They have sister, they have aunties, they have cousins, they have a female somewhere who can do that uh, teaching and explanation and everything and about hygiene for a, child, a girl child, you know. The dad can just talk about it, but, uh, you know, showing into detail, sometimes it, it's awkward. But it's okay, we respect that regardless. So. Uh, that, that's what I want to talk about when it comes to sex education and uh, no no child is more special than in the other like you know the gender-based um, difference there's, there's none every child has the right to know what to do when to do how to do it and sex education nowadays it's it's everywhere if you don't teach a child about sex they will see it yes they will see it on those fonts teach a child about sex education if you don't teach your child what sex is if you don't teach your child what sex what what is all about sex they will know they will even know much than you think they will know they will see it on those phones that you see with them they will they will google it they will see it on movies something will just happen they will see it they will hear it with from friends they will hear it from everywhere. Sex education should be like a daily education because it's everywhere. In this society that we live in, it's digital. It's everywhere and it's, it is on our face. And being, uh, being parents, it's, we cannot afford to be naive. We cannot afford to be to close our eyes and, and, and like uh, sweep things under the rug. It's no longer working. It's no longer working. The conversation is kind of working. Let them know that you know. Let them know this is what happens. And you know, it's good. And for me, I'm sure they will feel settled when the conversation is coming from a parent, honestly, because they believe parents are their, 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 their gods. They believe parents are everything for them. And when this, the, the sex education comes from their dad, their mom, their family member, their auntie, their, their shosh, the shosh is grandma, yeah? When it comes from there, it, it feels it feels settled. It doesn't feel weird, it doesn't feel funny. And it, they feel special because, you know, I was educated, the sex education that was given me by my parents, you know? It feels better. Don't let them hear it from outside. Speak it. Speak it out, have the conversation, let them know you know, and all that. So, that's it for today yeah that's it for today thank you for staying thank you so much for viewing and if you have anything that you want me lily monash to know kindly do leave a comment there below let's be interactive and if you have not subscribed kindly do 
if you do have any other topic maybe you feel like i uh, i lily can handle it better or i can bring it on set and have the conversation about it and talk about it you know you can let me know on the comment section i am here to read <laughs> and reply your comment if it needs a reply and uh, yeah no one is perfect living uh one day at a time taking one day at a time it's not easy but we're doing it right we got it and don't be depressed don't be stressed about anything anything doable you can do it as well it's about trusting yourself being you and continue living your life laughing out loud and love the loved ones people need love out here the way you are loved and you feel good spread that love that's why I call this channel Live Love Love with me, Lily Munyash. Thank you for watching. See you on my next video. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. So every time I upload a video, you'll be the first person to be notified. Thank you so much. I love you guys.